Hey everyone, it's Ken Spiercy. Thanks for tuning into the show tonight. You ever go down the road and you look out the side of your window as you're driving and you see shoes? I saw it enough to prompt me to do my own investigation into it. So this is what it's about. The other day I started my shoe on the side of the road investigation by getting in my van and heading west. It wasn't long before I encountered my first shoe. I pulled over and tossed it in the back of my van. I wanted to study it later back at my facility. Shortly after my first shoe on the side of the road, I encountered a second shoe. I grabbed that one too. As luck would have it, I came across a third shoe. I added it to the two I already had. Luck was really on my side when I spotted a fourth shoe. And then believe it or not, I saw a fish shoe. A fish shoe? or even a halibut slipper. But it didn't end there. I kept finding shoe after shoe after shoe. Who would have thought? Two crocs in a day. I think my shoe expedition went really well. I was happy to find a shoe just like the one that I was missing. It wasn't until I got home I realized that the shoe that I had put on was quite simply meant to surveil me. Let this be a lesson to you. Never pick up a shoe on the side of the road. This is Ken Spiercy. Over. Ken, this is Mr. Windpipe. Nice job. If you hadn't spotted the microphone in the shoe, your entire operation would have been severely compromised. Roger that. Keep up the good work. I look forward to reading your report on all the other shoes you collected. Talk to you later. Over and out. Hi, Teddy Time Traveler here with a special Shoes on the Side of the Road report. I think I can help illuminate where some of the shoes on the side of the road come from. I sometimes will lose a shoe when I time travel from one time period to the next. I'm sure it happens to other time travelers as well. Just the other day, I left a shoe back in 1976. I try to be prepared for such occasions by keeping an extra shoe in my suitcase. Having that extra shoe as a backup gives me confidence that I can travel in time without worrying about the loss of a shoe. I hope my special Shoes on the Side of the Road report has been informative and shed some light on a very important subject. Bye now! Hey everyone, thanks for watching this episode. 
Before we go, I'd like to share with you something I like to do once a week. On the weekends, the newspaper likes to print a feature that's called Police Blotter. And it sort of outlines some of the um, potential criminal aspects that might be occurring in our neighborhoods. And it sort of informs us that some of these things... Uh, there's vigilant people out there that keep an eye out for all of us. And um, so I'd like to read a couple of them to you. And, uh, oh, I actually got uh, more than two. So let's start with this one. This is a good example. Police were notified of a loose turkey that was stuck in their sprinkler and squawking. The officers were able to free the turkey and return it to the forest. Uh, here's another one. This happened in the city of Waukezo. Officers were called on a domestic dispute involving two neighbors. One neighbor was claiming that the leaves from the other neighbor's trees were ending up in their yard. The officers were able to placate the situation by saying they would talk to the wind. And uh, two more. Okay, let's see what this one has to say. Oh, another animal on the loose. Report of a llama entering their yard and eating their daisies. The officers were able to leash the llama and return it to Peru. And the last one I'll read before I say goodbye goes like this. A report of a suspicious white van being in their neighborhood with a person getting out and picking up shoes that were alongside the road. The police calmed their suspicion by saying the so-called suspect was only doing some soul searching. Everything.